It's Holly. I am so excited that you've joined me. Um, please give me some hearts so I can see that someone's there. Today we're going to be talking about seeing seeds. I thought I would be talking about sowing seeds, but I think we'll talk about seeing them because this is just too big a topic to cover in one day. So I'm really, um, this is such an amazing um, topic to me. I think seeds are so fascinating because the life is in the seed. So I want to read some quotes to you to get started. And this is, um, these are just from various people. This is from Henry David Thoreau. He says, Though I do not believe that a plant will spring up where there is no seed, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there, and I am prepared to expect wonders. And this one is Albert Einstein. He said, There are two ways to live your life. One, as though nothing is a miracle and the other as though everything is a miracle. Here's another one. Even the greatest creations start from the small seeds. And this is another a, a Chinese proverb. It says, um, to see things in a seed, that is genius. So I hope today we can look at seeds a little closely and enjoy uh, the majesty there. And my favorite scripture for this is Isaiah 45.3, which says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth in secret places in order that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth who calls you by your name. So the one who created the seed that put all of the life into the seed is the one who knows you and calls you by name. Okay, so that's the beginning. I just want to do a little bit of a welcome and I'm wearing um, a nature craft that Pamela Torres made for me. Thank you, Pamela. We had so much fun on Friday. We got together to make some really fun nature crafts with winter scraps. And so we made, um, people made wreaths. Heather, I loved your wreath. Brooke, I loved your wreath. Um, Brooke made a goblin house. I've never made a goblin house. We have goblins that live in our um, laundry room. Hers is outside. Um, Tracy, you did beautiful with your iced nature. I was just, I think that could be paintings for a wall, honestly. Um, bouquet, Bethany, I loved your, your bouquet. It was just full of energy and it was just amazing. I hope that has a prime place in your house. I loved um, the tree that Benjamin made and um, that was pretty special. And then we even had antler art from uh, the Stroh's kids. So oh, one of the things that we always start with is tea. And so today, because we're studying seeds, I thought we would talk about um, a wild chai. So here's all of my ingredients. Jace, you want to hold that up close so people can see it? We have two cinnamon sticks. We have um, some fresh ginger, um, a whole nutmeg that I'm about to grate. Um, we have some astragalus root. Um, they're in those two tongues right there. We have burdock root, dandelion root, whole cloves, whole peppercorns, anise seeds, and allspice and echinacea root. So um, you can, there's like diff eight different wild plants that have an anise flavor to it. So if you don't have anise seeds, you can use, um, these are the anise stars, aren't they beautiful? You can use instead a fennel um, well, I'll make it in my, uh, I'm writing a blog on this, and so I'll write out all the different um, anise flavor, licorice flavor plants, and there's quite a few, and there's a lot of lemon plants. All right, so all of this I'm going to put into some water and simmer that. Now that's called a decoction, and this is going to take a good time to do, so I can't offer you any tea right away, but it'll be ready by midway through our talk this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I don't really want the flavor of pine, but you could use pine as well. Let me um, grate up my, uh, oh, I don't see my grater. Well, I bet this will work. This is the nutmeg. Um, the reason why you simmer, <clears throat> uh, make a decoction uh, out of these seeds and roots is because they're a more dense texture and you want to have yeah, this is not working. Let me use a knife. You want to be able to, um, if you just poured boiling water over all these things, you'd have no flavor whatsoever. Okay, this is working great. 
you'd have no flavor whatsoever and you want to get all of these amazing constituents, all of these incredible healing properties of all these incredible foods and seeds and roots is basically what this is. So the way you do that is you put it in a pot of boiling of water and you don't really want it to boil, you just want it to simmer really hot for a good 15-20 minutes and then you drain off the plant material. Oh, I love the smell of nutmeg. Um, and by the way, I am diffusing cardamom um, from Young Living, and that is a seed. So some of our essential oils are actually made from seeds. So when we first started, I think with pine, uh, I'm not sure, we did an infusion maybe with lemon balm or something. That's completely different. It's just dried leaves, the mullein tea, we did that as well. And you just simply pour the tea over it, the water over it, and let it steep. Whereas with this, it needs to decoct. So that's a completely different ball of wax. So let me go ahead and put this in the water and start decocting. So now we're going to do a, a cooking demo. So one of the things about a winter, the winter time, and we're still in the winter, although today feels nice and warm, is that we want to enjoy the wildly preserved. And so I have, I've got a, um, a video that I just did on all of my wild preserved areas like I have a wild pantry and I have a wild freezer and a wild refrigerator and I've canned and fermented and pickled and dried and um, made things into ice cubes and all kinds of things so that all winter long I can eat wild and enjoy all of this high heightened nutrition all right so what I I did is I have collected lots and lots of seeds and so um, Seeds are highly nutritious. Oh my gosh, I'm getting burdock all over me. I'm going to make a wild granola. So I'm going to just do the regular stuff like the cranberries and the almonds and the pecans and the coconut and the pumpkin seeds because that's really good for high in testosterone. Chase will hold it up close. And I also added to this amazing protein of lamb's quarter seeds. And um, in Linda's book, Linda Runyon's amazing book that you all got to get. Karen, how are you enjoying her, her materials? I bet you're loving them. Let me know in the comments below. Um, she has a whole section on nutrition. So for lamb's quarter seeds, they are the second highest in protein of all of the plant kingdom. So amaranth has 27 grams of protein for a half a cup, which is the highest plant protein and the second highest is the lamb's quarter at 17 grams of protein for half a cup. I think that's even more than a hamburger. I'm not sure, but it's pretty amazing. So I'm going to take all of these oats and I'm going to throw them in here. And you want to use, um, like I'm really into real nutrition and real food, so it's not just a matter of feeding, filling your stomach, it's a matter of feeding your cells. So you want to get organic um, if at all possible. And so then I'm going to just throw all of that in there. And then I, I made a combination of honey and a little bit of maple syrup and some coconut oil. And coconut oil is a solid, and so therefore it makes uh, it hard unless you buy a fractionated coconut oil. So that's what I used here. Let me get a spoon. So first I'm going to just mix it up a little bit before I add that in. And then I'm going to have Jason, is that okay? I'm going to have Jason mix this up and put it on this cookie sheet. I put it on parchment paper because I want it to stick to the, um, the, I don't want it to stick to the tray. I want all of that goodness just to go into making the granola. And then we'll bake this at 350 for, till it looks done. I, I'm not sure. So that's all in there. So one of the things I wanted to talk about before we get into talking about seeds more is um, something that I worked on when everyone was making crafts. I worked on seeing trees. And so I can't wait to show those to you. But what I did is I took a clothespin and I put a piece of, um, I put, I wrote on the back of the clothespin what tree I'm referring to. And then I put the entire, let's get an example. So this is not an edible tree, but this is an example. 
So this is a buckeye, and so there's the terminal buds that we've been talking about. And then here's the husks that um, the beautiful buckeyes grow inside of, kind of shriveled up. They look kind of like owl's heads to me. So I just wanted to have everything related to all of the scraps that that tree made, all of its fruits and stuff, on each one. So I've got them for, oh my goodness, for birch and beech and um, maples and hawthorns and magnolias and black walnuts and um, chestnuts. Anyway, I, I'm pretty excited about it because these will be a really good teaching tool for when we're talking about the different trees. And I hope that you've been doing your hiking habits and that you've been looking at those terminal buds. And if you're living in a lower altitude than I live at, I'm at 3,500 feet, you've probably already seen some of them begin to even open, which is so exciting. So just being intentional and getting out there and walking every day the same spot, looking at the same trees, all right, Jason, I'm going to let you um, put this on the tray, and then if you could stick it in the oven, I'll let you sample it. Okay. Okay, okay so another thing that I was just out with my hiking today was um, I like to talk about what's on nature's wave, and I know that we are going to do that a lot in the future, but right now I've been trying to focus on on the wild preserve and that's part of the winter rhythm is just enjoying what you've spent all summer preserving and stuff and enjoying it throughout the winter but now that things are popping up I don't want you to miss out on any of them so um, you take your jewel so I was hiking and I found this beautiful bitter crest and so oh it looks so vibrant and so tasty so bitter crust is in the mustard family and the Brassicaceae family, and all mustards are edible. And they are I, probably the highest in nutrition of vitamins and minerals than any other wild plant. So all of them have four petals, um, four little petals. All mustards have four petals, and they all have uh, six stamens. Four of them are tall and two of them are short. Um, it has the cutest little leaves. They're really hard to see because they're so small. But when these turn, when these flowers um, are pollinated, they turn into seed pods. And when you brush them with your leg or you walk by, they just throw the seeds far, like four or five feet away. And um, and it's just such a fun thing to play with. I love spreading <laughs> mustard seeds so I can have more. But this will go in my dinner tonight for sure. Um, and I kept it with its root system so I could keep it fresh to show you guys. Jace, can you hold this up close so people can see? So this is bitter crust, and it's one of the mustards. Okay, thank you. All right, I can put that down. So two announcements. Um, this coming week... Friday night is my Why Eat Wild webinar, and I'm, I would love it if you could share this with your friends and family, anyone that you think would be interested in learning about all of the free gifts that God has provided through us to us in nature. I would love to see this packed out. It'll be on Zoom and also on Facebook Live on Holly Drake, not on Wild Blessings, but on Holly Drake. So love to have you all come and then... I've been working on it for literally months, and so I'm excited about this. Um, I took all of your suggestions and I made it better for this coming week. You can get 10% off Linda's materials if you say Holly 10. So the winner of the craft is going to get um, is going to get this incredible wild food um, duck that Linda created for the Navy Seals because she would train them on how to eat off the land. And so these are 52 of the most popular wild edibles that are found all over the world. And it has the information on the back and you can play cards with it because this is the three, three of hearts. So how cool is that? And Eric gave it to us. So this was a gift from Eric, her son, to one of you. And he also gave me a new one because I ruined mine by leaving it out in the rain. Which reminds me, let's talk about the journal before we get into the seeds. So the habits that I'm trying to uh, work into my life, into the rhythm of my life, um, I just am so inspired by that, 
that God has put these rhythms into place. And so I've been thinking about tapping my foot to the rhythms of heaven. And so part of the rhythms that I'm hoping that, that you all do and that I've done for years is just that daily hiking habit, which is life-changing. And a daily sit spot. So I like having a destination to hike to and then find a place where you can be cozy and sit and just be and read and look and observe and use all five of your senses to um, soak in God's gifts of the warmth of the sunshine, of the breeze on your face, watching with your eyes, listening with your ears, and the birds are starting to come back, the songbirds, and it's so exciting. Um, So all of that is so precious. But then taking it a step further um, is, is to use a journal. And so um, my journal is precious. And I want to say it's kind of a private thing. And so your assignment for this week is to share a journal entry. <laughs> but feel like, don't feel like you have to share something that's personal to you or whatever. Just share something that you feel like you would like to share. So get yourself a journal. Um, and then just start writing in it the things you see, the, sing- the things that bless you. Um, sometimes you could write poetry. Um, sometimes you can write, um, you know, just the gifts that you've been given, kind of like an Easter egg hunt, looking for gifts that God has provided hidden in plain view. Um, so many precious things that you can do. I would love to see you guys get yourself a really nice journal and then use it only for writing your personal um, gifts that you've enjoyed or your thoughts or prayers. Sometimes I'll write something as a, to the Lord or as if it's from Him to me. So that's really special. Then also using, how many of you got a jeweler's loop? If you could comment below if you've got one. Um, keep this with you at all times. And so like I'll keep it in my forging belt or uh, in my backpack. But I always want to look up close and personal because it's unbelievable what you can see if you block out the peripheral vision and you come in close and you can just see the details on every seed. It's just Amazing. The rhythm thoughts. Okay, so I wanted to tell you, so I was thinking about how important rhythm is, and um, the scripture that we memorized together on this was Genesis 8.22, which says, as long as the earth remains, spring seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, um, day and night shall not cease. So those are some of the rhythms that God has put into place. And he's put in many more rhythms as well. And so just even your heartbeat, if you can't get into a rhythm, just put your hand over your heart and feel it beating. And then just realize, wow, this is a gift. This gift of life is something God has given me. And then just settle down and settle your heartbeat down. Um, You can have daily rhythms. You can have weekly rhythms. But the importance is intentionality. And the night before is the beginning of a good day. And so um, my goal is to get to the end of every day and go, that was good. And um, that's what God did when he created. He would say, this was very good. So starting the night before with intentionality is huge. And so one of the things I was thinking of with the crazy world that we're involved in, it's just so much um, access to information. Information used to be like, would double every, you know, century or something. And now it doubles every five minutes um, that was made up, but I, there is a real, <laughs> there's a real statistic for all of that. Um, the, to just to slow down and to be intentional, what do I want my day to look like? And so I always start my day with the Lord, and I always start my day with my hiking habit and my sit spot, no matter how busy I am. In fact, the busier I am, the more I want to spend time quietly alone, especially looking at what God has created. And as I'm looking at his creation, I think, wow, the one who made that can handle my problems. He can handle me. And it just illuminates your heart and your mind. Um, I was thinking about bungee jumping. Rhythms are kind of like attaching the end of the, uh, the bungee jump to a secure bridge or something because then you're just kind of anchored. Or I'm thinking of an anchor, how an anchor will keep a ship from floating away or from being bashed on the rocks. And so uh, rhythms are important. And with our children, it's even more important to have rhythms in your own personal life because 
they, um, they depend on it. And I, I have to confess, I did not do that at first. When I first gave birth to Brian and Jonathan, I was so revolving around them and, and whatever their little needs at the moment were that I didn't even have my own rhythm. I had no idea what I was doing. I just was simply interested in making sure they were happy. So I honestly think that was wrong, and I changed my mind about all of that when I was going crazy, and I um, was pregnant for Jordan, and I started listening to a um, wonderful uh, couple talking about raising children with rhythms and times, and so there would be a time they would say when it would be, you feed the baby when they wake up, and, um, or no, I I can't even remember what the rhythm was, but with this specific rhythm where there was a play time and a um, crib time and a bath time and a uh, eating time and a cuddle time and a singing time or whatever. And there just became, and there was this time called room time where they were first left in their crib for a short period of time, starting at like 15 minutes with just one toy. And then it would extend to an hour. And we did that for years. And we would say, okay, buddy, you've got these few toys and you just stay in your room for this hour. When it's up, then um, then come show us what it is you made. And it was just amazing. And, and I could count on that hour being an hour I could work with Brian and Jonathan because we homeschooled them. So that was incredible. And it gave them a sense of peace. So the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts you can give your kids is to develop your own rhythms and be more concerned about your rhythms and inviting them into them than you are about whether or not they're happy at the moment or if they you know, what they need, because what they really need is for you to be their anchor. And you need the anchor of these rhythms so you can be tapping your foot to the rhythms of heaven. So I hope that is inspiring to you. That's kind of been exciting for me. And I've been doing some really unusual rhythms, um, which I'm not going to share right in here, but, but um, that have been kind of anchoring my week. Every sun- Saturday morning I've been doing something difficult, but it's been really good for me. And so I'll tell you about that sometime. Okay. So that is um, the preparing the night before and all that. And okay, so well, let's talk about the seed. So these, every seed, let's, I've got a few big ones here. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to talk about seeing seeds. So every single seed has um, lots of different aspects to it. So I honestly think that the seed pods are more beautiful than the flowers. But after the flower comes the seed pods. And within the seed pods are sometimes millions of little seeds. And each seed is shaped differently. And so here's an example of some of my favorite uh, wild food seeds, wild edible plant seeds. And every single one of them are different colors. Some of them are red. Some of them are yellow. Some of them have little parachutes on them like the milkweed or the dandelion. Um, The seed itself is shaped sometimes like a screw, sometimes like a fish scale, um, sometimes like um, round and amazing, but every single seed has the mystery of every single thing it needs to become a full plant and create more seeds. it's, It's amazing. So every single seed has a seed coat. So here's some seeds here. Every seed has a seed coat, and inside of the seed is an embryo, a little baby plant. And then there's the endosperm, which is the cotyledon, which feeds that little tiny baby. And when the conditions are right, and uh, we'll talk about that next week, about sowing seeds, because there's so much to say, and I didn't want to run out of time this week. But when the conditions are right, and and it sends down a root, into the uh, soil, and um, then the the little seed eats the the embryo eats the uh, energy inside of that seed until it puts out two little seed uh, little leaves called a cotyledon leaf, and they're false leaves; they're not real leaves, but they are there. They start to shrivel until the real leaves are able to get the photosynthesis and the energy from the sun, and then those little cotyledons fall off. My favorite cotyledon is a jewelweed. Those two little seedlings, those little uh, fake leaves, are so tasty and so delicious. But you got to get them as soon as they come up. And don't worry, I'll make sure that you know when they're coming. Um, and it won't be for a while. But boy, they're one of my favorite edibles. Um, okay, 
So every seed is different. And some of them are huge, like a coconut is a seed. <laughs> and, it, and it's just huge. And then this is a, um, a, what is that? Oh, this is an avocado seed and a buckeye. And this is an acorn. All of those are seeds. And some of them are super tiny, like the uh, mullein. So it's important, like we've been talking about, getting to know what a plant looks like, like getting to know a person, getting to know trees, um, to know, well, what is this? So when I see this, I think of Alfredo noodles because these flowers that come out before the seeds, of course, can be boiled and taste just like pasta. It's amazing. Right, Danica? She and I made them together. They were incredible. And then the seeds, you can powder those seeds up and make them into a really nutty, tasty flour. Um, there's so much to say about this plant. We'll spend a whole hour on this sometime this summer. But knowing them by their seeds, knowing them by their leaves, knowing them by their seed pods, knowing them by their root even. I mean, talk about intimacy. This is really getting close. But it all starts with observation and being able to observe. Okay, so then this little guy here, have you ever heard about teasing wool or carding wool? They would use teasel. This is teasel. The whole stem is super prickly. This is one badass plant. And this is really, really good for Lyme disease. You can tell it's heavy duty medicine because it just looks like it's on guard. So you collect all the seeds and then look at those seeds up close and personal with your, yep. You know, they look kind of similar to a burdock seed, but a burdock seed curls a little bit. I'm gonna look at this up close. Wow, that's amazing. So if you didn't buy a jeweler's loop, you need to get one and get one for every one of your children and write their name on it or something because this is like, opens up a whole nother world. It's all worship to me, okay. So I know that this is yarrow, and this is evening primrose, and teasel, and this is um, false indigo, and which is not edible. I just think it's beautiful. And this is yucca, and this is yellow dock, and this is mullein. So I know all of these seed pods by looking at them. But it's because I've spent time with them. I know the plants in every single um, part of their life cycle. Um, but then to be able to know them by their seed, that is incredible. So um, you can, uh, oh, so this is milk thistle seed, and I've got all kinds of them. And Susie Turp, I sent, I, she won one of the poetry contests, and so she ended up getting one of all of my favorite wild edible seeds. So fortunately, they grow like weeds. So we talked about the seed coat is the outside, and that seed coat, as it swells with water, um, it, it gets... Really, it can absorb so much more water than its own weight. And when it gets swollen to a certain point, it opens up and that begins the germination process. Um, I made for you guys a crossword puzzle. So I'll be putting this on our Wild Blessings um, Facebook group. Um, oh, here's another one of those little um, seen trees clothespins I made. Um, this one is the chestnut. And so you can see the chestnut itself, and there's the chestnut husk, which are just like sea porcupines. They're so, so uncomfortable to step on barefoot. And this is what a chestnut um, terminal bud looks like. It's so incredibly nondescript. It's almost like it's not there, but those leaves are quite there. And then I just use an acorn for a little bird nest and a little um, manzanita seed for an egg. And I got these little robins off of Amazon. So... I think these are just so cool. Pretty excited about it. Okay. What am I missing? Oh, here's some more seeds. So some reasons why I love seeds so much is because um, the enzymes are fresh in the seeds. And seeds can last for years, sometimes up to thousands of years, um, if they're not put in the right conditions where there's the moisture and the oxygen and the um, temperature changes. So... Um, I love to to sprout them, and this is these are mung seeds, and um, they're very much alive, but they need the moisture. So I put them in water, and I soaked them, and then every day I pour them out into the sink. And so I like to get these little lids that have the holes in it like this, um, 
or you don't need to, you could just use a um, cheesecloth or something. So then I'm going to get it wet again and pour it off. And so this second time around, I am not going to put water in here at all because they're already drenched. I'm just going to leave them like this. Um, and then later tonight, I'll get them wet again, pour it off, and just let, let them sit next to my sink. And then next Tuesday, you will see that these have made beautiful sprouts, and they are so good in salads. But you can even sprout wild food seeds. So some of the wild food seeds that I have collected and that I really rec recommend you collect I keep wanting to get this out of the way. I bought this book this week. I'm so excited about it. I'll share it in a minute. Um, is, okay, this is, um, y'all know what this is? Okay, this is, Jace will show it to you. This is sumac, rush glabra. And um, they're still out there this time of year, believe it or not. And um, the sumac berries are, um, my dear friend Ann Randall helped me herb around this week she came over she's amazing she's a cook she has like I don't know a thousand cookbooks I asked her if she would help me with my cookbook and she said I would love to she was in charge of cooking at Samaritan's Purse's kitchen for 20 years and she's really a foodie kind of like me but um, so I'm gonna teach her the wild part and she's gonna help me with the cooking and that'll help me with the cookbook she helped me to debury these sumacs and so they're just like that. If you've ever heard of za'atar in the Middle East, the seasoning, it's kind of lemony and delicious. Um, by the way, these are very lemony. Mm. Extremely tart, very high in vitamin C. This is not poisonous. Poison sumac has white berries. The uh, rush glabra, which is this sumac, is totally delicious and totally good for you, and you can make lemonade out of this. But there's some caveats on how to do that, which I'll teach you next time we do wild drinks. So we have a lot of these ready to go to be used. And then here's, I'm running out of my lamb's quarter seeds. I do have some more next to the, the stove. But um, this is the Chena Podium album. And this is what I was telling you has 17 grams of protein. Um, oh, Linda, um, living off the wild for all those years, she would take this and put it in a thermos and put boiling water over it the night before she had to go foraging the next day. And she said that it would give her the energy she needed for five hours of hiking without her stomach even growling. So I tried that and it's just absolutely, uh, has a very green taste and it was kind of disgusting. But that's what she did every day. And so it was... You know, like if you're hungry, you'll eat anything and all of a sudden it tastes pretty good for you. I'm really all about preparation and how you can prepare it to be tasty. Um, okay, plantain seeds. Let me find a plantain seed stock. Hold on. Come on, little guy. Can't believe it. Oh, here's one. Actually, here's a bunch. Here's one. Okay, so you've seen, uh, we'll be doing a whole class on this as well. But this is the seed stock of Plantago Major. And um, have you ever heard of psyllium husk? You know, you use that with uh, constipation issues and stuff. That is, this is the psyllium husk. Okay, so this is super, super nutritious and super good fiber. So, um, I put a whole bunch of this, a whole half a cup of of the plantain um, seeds that I had collected from last year into my uh, granola. How's it look? It smells great. Oh, it smells so good. I wish we had smell-o-vision. Okay, so, um, so I put that into, I love collecting these seeds. I collect all of the stalks um, in the late summer and then dry them and keep them for the winter use. The yellow dock seeds um, is another really high in nutritious, high in iron um, seed. And so these I like to make into crackers and we'll do a cooking demonstration on that at another time. I wish you guys were here. I wish we could hear your stories um, about your hiking, spot, hiking habits, about your sit spots, about special moments that you've had with in nature this week. Um, 
This is a gift that I got that I found in a in the woods. Um, I call it Coyote Kitchen because every time I go to this particular spot, I always find bones, and this was a, a deer that the coyotes got. Um, so I'm going to give that to my son Jordan because he he loves skulls. I wanted to tell you about um, roasted dandelion roots. So the best time to collect dandelion root is in the spring and then again in the fall. And in the spring, you want to get them because they're, um, they're going to be really good for your liver and as a good detoxer for your liver. In the fall, they're really high in inulin, which is really good for like diabetes and stuff like that. So you can get different constituents on different times of the year based on what the, the, the weather is like. Um, so the dandelion root is in our chai, and I drink that coffee every day. So we'll be talking about sowing seed next week and also about berries because I've been working with my frozen berries, making fruit leather, making syrups, um, and I wanted to show with you, share with you how to do that, how to make wild sodas. Um, I love wild beverages. My, freeze, my refrigerator is full of um, some pretty crazy awesome things. So when you see a different plant, you don't just see the structure of it. As you spend time with it, you remember what, what its skills are and what its gifts are. It's kind of like when we get to know people. Um, the more you get to know them, the more you know how gifted they are. Like uh, Maggie Russell is an amazing artist, and so is Pamela Torres. And um, the things that they can make with their hands is pretty amazing. But you wouldn't know that just by looking at them. So one of the things I want to recommend to you as you go about looking at seed skeletons that are kind of looking sad this time of year is just to, um, if you know what they are, always say hi to them. Every time you see a tree that you've identified, say hi to it. And that way you're constantly remembering its name and remembering also the things I've taught you or that you've learned yourself. Um, okay, so I wanted to read this story of the giving tree by Shel Silverstein because we've been talking about trees for so long. And I, I loved reading this book to my kids when they were little. I bought a copy of it for my granddaughters, but then I thought, you know, I really need a copy myself. Okay. Once there was a tree. And she loved a little boy. See his foot? And every day, the boy would come. Look how happy he looks. Hold on, why don't you come around this way? Okay. And you can still read, but hold it closer so oh, that that's a great idea. everyone can okay. see the pages. And every day, the boy would come. Kind of like what we do, right? And he would gather her leaves. and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. That's us, Heather. And he would climb up her trunk. Look at his little legs, his feet and his hands. And his shoes are down here. It's so good to be barefoot. And he would swing from her branches and eat apples. You see those apples, cores being thrown down? And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. Oh, that's so precious. Did you all have a special tree when you were a kid? And the boy loved the tree. Very much. And the tree was happy. See, it says me and T. But time went by. And the boy grew older. 
Oh my goodness, so there's two sets of legs. Must be his girlfriend. Oh, and it is, because he's got me and YL, whoever that is. And the tree was often alone. I love the way Shel Silverstein is personifying this tree. Then one day, the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things, and I want to have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. Share the granola. Okay. And the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. You see his legs climbing that tree. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. Then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy, and she said, Come, boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy, and I want a house to keep me warm, he said, and I want a wife, and I want children, and, I, and, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? Oh, I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you can cut off my branches and build a house, and then you will be happy. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered, come and play. I'm too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. After a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth, my teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I'm just an old stump. I am so sorry. I don't need very much right now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. An old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down. Sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. <laughs> that gets me every time. O oh Lord, how many and varied are your works. In wisdom you've made them all. The whole earth is full of your riches. And I think it really delights the Lord when we spend time in his creation and we reflect on what it re reveals about his heart to us. And so I um, wanted to talk about our homework assignment. And I don't want to call it homework. I want to call it field work. And so field work is when we go outside and go on our hiking habits um, and or, you know, all of the winter work that we had that we talked about, you know, pruning and tapping trees, which I've been doing a lot of lately, um, planting bulbs, 
what are some other winter work that you guys have been doing? Preparing your gardens, um, burn piles, you know, just organizing. That's the winter work. It's in this season, getting into the rhythm of making the most of the end of winter. But it's not going to be here much longer. We've got the seasons are just kind of surging and new things are popping up all over the place. So make sure that you're out there looking for chickweed, nettle, the allium, remember we talked about wild garlic last week. Um, that is so nutritious. And um, yellow dock, just only the early leaves because they get really, really bitter, although bitter is so, so important for our liver. Um, the ground ivy has popped up, and I'll show that to you next week. Um, bitter crest is such a delight, and it's one of those mustards. All of the mustards, like I said, are edible. Um, garlic mustard, I... I, I found some, but they weren't really vibrant yet, so that I'll be talking about that coming up soon. That's an invasive that when you find it, you rip it up by the roots because we want to get rid of it, but you might as well eat it while you're at it. And we'll talk about why it's so dangerous to trees and other plants in its locality, but um, it's really tasty. So I love making garlic mustard pesto and all kinds of things that we'll do together in cooking demonstrations. Um, Queen Anne's lace. I noticed the leaves are, baby leaves are coming up, and those are that's what a carrot is. This was uh, Dalcus carota, which is the um, wild carrot, is what the cultivated carrots were created from. So the early leaves are really, really tasty and carroty. I'm going to chop them up fine in salads, and of course pine. And then the other thing I wanted to tell you about is that um, grape hyacinths are an edible flower. But um, they're really not very tasty, but they're beautiful. And um, so I hope that you're all working on your, your posters that you printed out your memory work. Um, so the one for Pine is, Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by those who delight in them. Splendid and majestic are his works. He has made his wonders to be remembered. So I hope that you memorize that and that you put the edibles. So on here I put the Pine and the Allium and uh, some of the grape hyacinths, because those were all up when I was teaching on pine a month and a half ago. Um, then the next verse was Genesis 8.22, on seizing the seasons. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, the cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. And then the last one we talked about with a sit spot was, um, he led her into the wilderness, and there he spoke to her heart. And so on here I've got yellow dock, this is garlic mustard, this is um, bitter crust, chickweed, nettle, um, oh I found a motherwort flower that makes a good tea, and then um, the bitter crust. So um, we'll be talking a lot about spring edibles as soon as we finish talking about enjoying the wildly preserved. I've, I've done a video for it and a blog which I'll be posting next Monday. So please join me on Friday night. Um, with the Why Eat Wild um, seminar or webinar, and please invite your friends to join. Um, also, your homework or your field work, your heart work, is going to be um, sharing a journal entry of anything that you write about. It could be a poem, it could be some thoughts that you had on seeds, it could be a prayer, um, it could be uh, whatever God puts on your heart. Just take time to be still. Um, so that you can be um, energized and be an anchor for your own self and for your children especially. It's really quick. Okay. I wish you could smell this. This is amazing. So this is my decoction. Oh, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but um, I will post pictures. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this through a sieve. I'm definitely saving these seeds and roots because I'm going to get probably another good batch out of this. I'm going to heat up some warm oat milk and then I'm going to uh, put a little bit seasoned to taste with a little bit of honey or maybe some maple syrup um, and this will be a really kick-ass tea. Uh, this is a chai. So this is another example of letting food be your medicine and medicine being your food because this is really healing. So, um, and it smells really, really good. Yes. What was the other thing you wanted to say? Some of those watching will be on YouTube. Could you explain to them 
how they can join your Teaching Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, I'm really excited that I'm actually teaching online instead of in person because I can reach more people and share with more people. So if you have found me and you want to be a part of this weekly class, um, you go to, you have to friend me first at, on Facebook. I'm Holly Drake. And um, I'll accept your invitation. And then I will invite you, if you ask me to invite you, to join me at um, Wild Blessings with Holly Drake Facebook group. It's a private group, and all of my ta- teachings will be left up there. Guys, I'm trying to organize the, the Facebook page so that it's, things aren't lost. So I'll have it by different topics. But anyway, that's one way. And the other way is just to go to my website at wildblessings.com. And there will be a pop-up where you can get my amazing handout of all of my favorite edibles. And that will give me your email address and I can contact you with whatever crazy, wild, wonderful thing I'm doing next. So I'm really honored that you would join me. I'm really excited about this topic. I'm excited about nature and nature's God. And I'm excited about doing this together. Yes. So if they join your email list, they'll also be notified of upcoming events. You have right. one this Friday, but can you explain any of those that you've got coming Oh, soon? yes. I do have other webinars. I have one that you don't want to miss called How to Forage, and that is extremely important because, you know what, it is uh, it's something that we've done for since the beginning of time, but there's some caveats to it, and it's very important that you have some rules and that you have this wisdom that has been wildly lost. So I'm happy to teach it to you. And that's coming up. And then I'm doing one on Good Friday, which is going to be amazing. And it'll be the plants in the, in the life of Jesus Christ. And um, I, the timing, I think, is perfect for that. Um, I have so much to share with you. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm doing another one on the restorative power of nature, which is a talk I gave at, the, at a conference once. Um, that I can hardly wait to share with you as well. So enjoy this week. Get your sit spot going, your hiking habit going, keep your journal going, and then um, please p- post a journal entry or something that was motivating to you that you can share with us. So God bless you all.